Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class video. And in today's video, I am making a whole collection of simple springtime cards. So here is a look at these cards that I will be making today. Yes, we are making all of these fun cards. These are really great if you want to get in the springtime floral mood. And all of these cards feature stamps that are illustrated by this super talented artist, Anne Keenan Higgins. And I'm going to link to her Instagram down in the YouTube description box below but I just know if you go there you're gonna be so excited and inspired to use these stamps and one thing that I really love about her illustration style and the inspiration that I have found and what you will find over on her Instagram page is that you can get such a charming look with the most simple watercoloring the simplest cards really capture the charm of her illustrations and they're just one of a kind and so as you can see from these cards what's great is they're super easy to do if you want to make gift sets to give to people with all of these ready to go with a matching envelopes and bright happy colors it's just really fun so I'm going to start the first stamp that we're stamping is 40-837 chirps now all of these cards except for one and I'll try and remember to let you know are a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch card so that just gives you an idea of the size I'm stamping onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper and I'm using Ranger archival ink in the color of watering can and I really love to use this color of ink with these images these stamps that are illustrated by Ann Keenan Higgins because I think it adds to that sketchy look and keeps them light and fresh so the next one is 40-844 house sweet and I'm actually going to stamp this one four times because I just love these birds and I thought it was the perfect chance to mix up and use a lot of different sentiments on them. The next one I'm stamping is 40-845 from my heart and as you can see here I am doing this assembly line style and this is often how I create so I'll get really inspired. I pulled out all the stamps that I just love for this technique and I'm stamping everything ahead of time before I start on the painting. I can work in sections like this and I just think it kind of makes the whole experience more relaxing for me. Now I wanted to show you with this same stamp, you can use it in more than one way. So you can see I used it pretty straightforward, stamping the entire image on a card. Now on the second card, I'm just stamping the bouquet at the top because that is so full. You can use it just the flowers as well. So I'm stamping it at the top and the bottom of my card. Next up is 40-842, love ya. I love the sentiment that comes with this. I think it's so great for like little thank you presents. You could easily make a card for someone with this and then put a um, gift card for coffee inside. Just what a fun way to show someone that you're thinking of them. And I will stamp this three times and I'll show you the coloring for that. Next up is 40-841 Fresh Bouquet. Now this is the one where I'm doing two cards and it has one that is a five by seven size. So this first time I'm stamping it, this is just the four and a quarter by five and a half size. Again, all of these stamped with the Ranger Archival ink in the color of watering can. And that is a waterproof ink, which is helpful too. I'm using a misty stamp positioning tool, the Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. It does have some texture to it, so it's really nice to be able to re-stamp the image if needed because of the texture of the paper there. So again, this is the only one that's five by seven, but I wanted to make one where you could get that cute sentiment up there at the top. So now that I've got everything stamped, I can just relax and settle into my painting. So this is the first card that we will be painting. All one layer, but again, these stamps are so beautifully illustrated. They just capture the charm without needing much painting. So I'm doing all of my painting with my Sakura Koi Field Sketch Box. I've got my silver black velvet paint brushes and a little bit of water handy. And I wanted to show you there, I dip my paintbrush in and then I usually pat it off a little bit onto that paper towel as I'm going. Just gives me a little more control. 
you could paint these in with any kind of paint that you love any watercolors honestly if you have some Crayola watercolors for kids this they would work because again the charm is in the illustration and the painting is very simple painting I'm actually even trying to not fully paint each flower in just painting on some and leaving some white I was very inspired by the way that Ann Keenan Higgins illustrates and paints in her images to keep with that charm of the illustration so here I'm just dropping in some lighter blue and then sometimes while it's still wet I'll put a little bit of darker blue and let it mix and blend I'm not painting in all of the flowers completely so like you can see that last flower I did I left some of it white which again just keeps with that charm I think it gives it sort of a fresh modern look and I put some light blue down and then I'm just put darker blue in and blending it if you go out of the side of the lines that's okay too what's fun about these um, images too is you could completely give this a totally different feeling depending on the colors that you pick so I did this sort of all monochromatic in blues but I think it'd be so pretty like if all of these flowers in the background were different colors and it was super bright and colorful or you could make a set of cards like this and do them all monochromatic but do you know a blue one a red one a pink one and that would be fun set to give to somebody um, as a finished card set that they could use um, for cards it makes a nice gift sometimes just to give someone some handmade cards so that they can have a stash ready to go so just super super simple painting and coloring here now if you love to spend a lot of time coloring or you have a different medium that you prefer this would also look beautiful in Copics it would be to look beautiful in colored pencils any whatever you like there's no right or wrong and it's just fun these are just such happy images to be painting um, I love painting things that are just happy and whimsical because sort of puts me in a good mood too and like I said by stamping everything in advance and having sort of your painting ready to go then you can sit down and paint whenever you have a chance you might just be able to sit down and paint for five minutes or ten minutes but with these images and by having everything ready to go you could you could finish a card set you know just in an evening or a little bit each evening and in a couple of weeks you'd have a lot of cards done and you could restamp them and do different colors or different positions so these stamps are just a great fun and lots of possibilities you can see here on the green I'm just using one color of green sometimes I'm painting in just half of the leaf sometimes the whole leaf and I take no credit <laughs> for this sort of um, idea of placement for the colors I went to um, Ann Keenan Higgins Instagram which I'm linking down below to find my inspiration from her because it's so inspiring um, to have the stamp and be able to look at her work um, as an inspiration and that is it the card is finished it is ready to go I do like to stamp and work on a separate panel and then adhere it to a note card but if you stamp right onto the note card you're totally done <laughs> but it's such a charming little card so for the next one here is what the finished card looks like and I'll take you along in the process of painting it first of all I'm going to paint the flowers up above so I'm starting by just picking out a pink from my again that's my Secura Koi field sketch box watercolors it has all the colors you could need in it and I'm just going to go around and paint all of the ones that I want to be pink and that also is sort of an efficient way to do that and it also helps me keep things um, balanced in the design because I can kind of look and say okay do I have a nice good spread of pink in different areas of that bouquet and then I can go in and pick up another color and sort of evenly spread it out around the bouquet so that's just one tip if you want to have a multicolored 
bouquet or flowers along your background, you can work color by color to spread that out. You can always go back and add more as you go to. Now I'm going to just paint in some of these leaves. And again, you can see my painting on these. It's just one color per flower. I, I'm actually trying to make it not perfect. <laughs> so trying to leave some areas of white, and I think that just gives it that great sketchy modern look that matches up so wonderfully with the stamp design. Now I'm going to move on to the dress. I decided to keep it really simple and just go with a black and again not painting the whole thing just putting a little bit of paint here and there to give you the hint of what it is but you could also play around with um, lots of different colors on the dress as well. And I love that sketchy look on the dress, how open it is, that it allows you to leave that white, sort of have that um, bleeding look to the watercolors there. Now there's one place I use marker here, and this is a Copic marker. I'll have the exact color listed for you in the YouTube description box below. Um, but just here, uh, I don't have quite the perfect color of paint and I like the control of the marker so I do want to make sure I keep with that sort of sketchy look and I don't want to touch the ink that I stamped that with but I just added that there on the skin and there's the finished card now again remember this is that same stamp that we just painted in with the gal holding the bouquet but I just stamped only the bouquet at the top and the bottom of the card So there's a lot of versatility in these stamps as well, especially this one. I just think these flowers are so cheerful. You could stamp these like turn your card landscape and stamp them all along the bottom to just give the look of like a wildflower um, garden. I think that would be really pretty with some butterfly die cuts sort of flying amongst the flowers. And you'll see here, again, I'm going color by color and adding it in. And I'm just mirror, mirroring what I did on the top to the bottom just to make it easier. <laughs> I didn't have to think about where to put the color um, twice, just one time on the top or the bottom, and then I mirrored it on the other side. So for this one, I wanted to go like all out with the colors, super colorful. And again, it's kind of like what I would say is like scribble painting. Just like putting it on quickly, not giving it a lot of thought, just enjoying the process. It's very freeing. Even fun to do this with like someone who's brand new to stamping or even stamping with kids because they can get just a, a really good um, look with it and something to be proud of right from the get-go. But if you're an experienced stamper, I, it even feels good to me sometimes to just feel nice and loose when creating this. All I did was add a sentiment here and some die cut butterflies to finish off this card. This actually ended up being one of my favorites that I made in this set. So next up we will be painting in this one. You can see it is just three colors I think I used, maybe four if I count the tiny little tea bag. Now when I first go to paint this on, there's quite a bit of saturation of paint on my paintbrush, meaning there's like more paint, thicker paint on my paintbrush than water. But if I wanna use that same color and get a little different look, I can just have more water on my brush than paint and that will give me a lighter pink. This is another one of those bouquets that you could also stamp like, not stamp the teacup at the bottom and get more use out of it, more versatility. 
and just by changing the color scheme you can really change the look of this. So I'm going to show you how I painted in this with the pink color scheme and then I will also show you a second card that uses the same stamp but just a different color scheme and it just gives it a whole different look. There you can see an example of, that's the same pink from my palette, but the sort of the lighter pink has more water to it, and the first um, part had more paint to it. And I will just paint in these leaves. This may look very detailed, but it goes quickly. Just a little dot here and there, a swipe of the paintbrush and it will be all painted in. I think this would also make a really nice get well card. If you masked off that tea bag hanging out, you could also use it again as like a thank you or a gift with a gift card for some coffee or a coffee shop. and the card is complete. And this is again the only 5 by 7 size card. But you can use this stamp and it will fit onto your standard size card because here is that same stamp on a 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inch card. Next we're going to paint this set of bird cards. And what I went ahead and did was I painted the birds exactly the same on all four cards but I did the flower in a different color. So I'm just going to paint these guys in here. No need to be scared of painting birds. These are so whimsical. You can't do them wrong. I love the sort of way they're looking at each other. I feel like it's just perfect for adding a sentiment above there, almost as if like one bird is you and the other bird is the person you're sending the card to and they're saying it to them. Maybe that's just me being crazy thinking of it that way. But that's how I kind of thought of it as I was painting it in and stamping the sentiments. So here I'm going to make this this big pink flower. Again, I love the size and the openness of this and just painting it very, very loose. Not painting in the entire thing. It's okay to go out of the lines a little bit. It's just really fun. Then I'll just paint the stem in here. And then I'll go in and paint. I had the birds done assembly line style. And I'll just go in and paint these other flowers. Now I had a great fun picking out the sentiments for these. They feature um, new sentiments from our new um, transparent stamp sets. And I will list and link all of the stamps used, including the sentiments that you don't see me doing on video, down in the YouTube description box below so you can check those out in more detail. They're really great sets and I think they just add so much to the finished cards. So there's the big red flower. Next I'll do a sunny yellow one. You can see there just um, putting down that paint, letting it puddle up, letting it dry like that. I added a little bit, sorry it's a little bit off camera there, but I dropped a little bit of an orange color in there just to brighten things up so that it didn't look exactly the same as the um, bellies of the birds right there. And then we'll have a blue. So this too would make a fun set if you just want to do a bunch of these bird cards. And I used a light blue and then mixed in a little bit of the darker blue while it was still wet. And then I had a little hair there. <laughs> I had to get out. <sighs> And then I did let these air dry. I really kind of like the look that that gave it. If you were in a hurry, you could use your heat tool to dry them, but 
kind of like the puddly look that they got as they air dried, especially on those big open areas of the flowers. So I wanted to give you a look here at the finished cards with those sentiments stamped in there. They just fit so perfectly. And I think this is just such a cheerful set of cards. And you could really use this for any occasion. Birthday, encouragement, love, thank you. It's just those cute little birds chatting with each other. <laughs> Next up, we're going to give this one a color. Uh, this is another spot where I'm using my Copic marker. You could paint it as well, but for some reason this is just easier for me. You can see though I'm keeping that sketchy look and I'm trying not to saturate it too much on the lines that were stamped. Now with these sort of fashion girl stamps, one thing to keep in mind, and I'll show you with the samples, because um, I do three cards with this, but I'm just going to show painting one of them, is that you don't have to be realistic in how you paint them. So I think it's this one, but I actually don't even paint her hair. I just leave it sketched like that. There's another one where I don't add any um, color to her skin, and I just leave it uh, black and white with the paper showing through. And that is, again, the charm, I think, of these stamps, that they don't have to be realistic. They can be really whimsical. And and it just gives them a totally different look um, each time you use them. You can also personalize them for the person that you're giving them to. So maybe match up their skin color, their hair color, their color of their favorite shirt, whatever <laughs> that you're doing on there to personalize it even more. If you were giving someone like the gift of a fun little coffee mug, um, you could paint this one to match the one that you're giving them. It would also be cute on a gift card. I mean, a gift card or a tag. It would be really cute that way as well. Here I put down a little too much of that yellow. And so what I went in, because it was kind of like a, not a good yellow. <laughs> and so I went in and I just kind of used a wet, excuse me, a dry brush, a thirsty brush, and I could kind of lift up some of that yellow. And then I'm using the white actually from that set to sort of try and tone it down a little bit. It was a, it's a nice yellow, but it had a little bit too much of a brown um, tone to it. So that's why I kind of played around with that a little bit. Again, don't feel like you have to paint that hard or that sort of steam coming up from the cup. You can if you want, but you don't have to. I like leaving some of it uh, black and white like I did with her hair. Here I'm continuing with the yellow cup saga. <laughs> and I decided to sort of brighten it up here with another yellow, a different yellow on top. Felt it looked a little too washed out, so I went back in and fiddled some more. <laughs> so here's a look at that finished card. And then two more cards featuring that same stamp, same techniques. But like I said, um, here I left her clothing just a little more neutral and added more color to the cup. And then on this next one, it's like super clean and simple, but just did her clothing and her hat and the cup, but left everything else black and white. I hope you enjoyed coming along for this simple and whimsical set of springtime cards. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog. And I will link everything for you, including all the stamps used down in the YouTube description box below. Happy stamping!